News Gallery Roundtable. I'm Jennifer Doolin Wiley, Managing Editor of Art Business News. The need for industry discourse has never been greater as galleries and artists navigate their ways through a changing market. From trends in technology to current developments and predictions, eight fine art professionals weighed in on some of the greatest issues facing the art world today. I was going to say that um, we have a keen interest in promoting a greater connection between our clients and our artists, and that that is, that's sort of a core uh, thought process we use when when uh, uh, working with our clients. So maybe maybe someone else has a different thought on other uh, methods, but that's one thing that we pay a lot of attention to. The relationship between the artist relationship, and gallery. The relationship between the artist and the gallery is very key to us and very important for our client base. One of the trends that I found in our area are people are switching to, instead of buying huge paintings like I saw initially, miniatures and filling large spaces with a collection of small pieces by the same artist or a collection by several artists. So we really do well with miniatures. Uh, we have a strong following in um, our gallery of uh, contemporary realism. And then we have other artists that are uh, doing some strong figurative work that's uh, been going very well. Still lifes done in the school of the old masters are also flying off the wall. We do representational work and uh, our patrons seem to be going for an old school approach. question about trends. Something that I've seen with the artists that we carry in the gallery, we're a destination location, so we're not the, the uh, art collectors come from all over the country, all over the world, because our visitors come from all over the country, all over the world. But with some of the artists that we've been working with, they have developed themselves to a point where I'm seeing that they're interested in connecting to their, and I, that, this is probably a very unorthodox thing to say here at Art Expo, mm -hmm. but I'm finding that they have a desire to connect to their culture base directly. And I'm wondering if other people are experiencing this with artists that they've seen develop over a period of years, now they're feeling that they want to explore, or the artists that we're meeting are more uh, business savvy, and bypassing, you know, circumventing the gallery process to some extent. And I'm just wondering if that, I don't know if that's the kind of trend you want to talk about, but I'm, I'm interested if other people are experiencing this with your art style. Yes, we are. We're experiencing that with artists. We do uh, voluntarily connect our artists and people. We totally count on the integrity of our artists. Our artists have contracts with us. If anything, if it's ever found out that they're circumventing the gallery, they're put out of the gallery. I've never had to do that, but I make it a strong point with internet and, uh, and meeting the artists. The collectors love to meet the artists. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. the artists love to meet the collectors, yeah, yeah, yeah. so we're making the best of that. I was going to add that if you have an artist and you support him appropriately, he or she, um, and you manage the business and you form more of a partnership with the artist, then I don't think you'll have that problem. But clearly, that could happen. But clearly, a, a close association with your artist and, a, and involving your artist in shows and with your clients is the key to success. Yes. I'd like to add that what Frank said, 
that we had an artist, they come to all of our openings and shows. Um, the patrons, they just love to meet the artist. And we've actually had customers that have tried to go to the artist on the side. And because we have that close relationship with the artist, the artist directed the customer back through the gallery. Yes. Um, That's what happens in the gallery. Right. And a lot of the artists do, they are business savvy. They do have their open houses and their shows at their studios as well, but it's the integrity of maintaining the gallery relationship. Right. So whatever is brought through us, they, they kind of keep that clear. Okay. I just want to add one. I just want to add one last thing. It's an investment for both parties. Mm -hmm. An artist is going to treat you the way you treat them. If you hang four works of art from an artist and you don't support them, then they're not going to take the gallery as serious as they will with someone who's going to hang all, a good body of their works, mm -hmm. including a combination of originals and multiples. Yeah. Probably move on to the next question, but um, as I'm looking at it and from the answers that we received, I think it's a little similar. Uh, so. One thing that I am curious about, and it would be something that we should just go around the table and do really quickly, is maybe just tell me one or two of your artists that uh, are doing the best and describe their work briefly. Good start. I got a, a long list. <laughs> um, a couple of the artists that we carry are Divorce Shedrick out of New York and Dane Tillman out of our area, Exton, PA. Um, Shedrick, she's really into abstract figurative. And she launched a, a unique size of canvas, like an eight by 36, which did extremely well um, last summer. And now she's moving into extremely large canvases. And I am getting a lot of requests for 40 by 60 and greater. Um, and then Dane Tillman, he started an Americana style, which is more um, impressionist, um, figurative. And he's doing extremely well as well. He's branched out into a gallery in, in the beach area, which is a tourist area, probably similar to yours. He's doing extremely well in that area as well. And then we also carry sculpture, which I found has picked up, has surpassed ourselves in art mm -hmm. over the past year. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, our gallery represents 40 artists, but we have a core group of artists, uh, 10 artists that pretty well do three quarters of all the business of the gallery. I have one real star, and uh, well, no, I have many stars in the gallery, uh, but the one that sells the most work is Del Boire Bomb, uh, contemporary realism. His pieces are absolutely exquisite. He has a strong following, but uh, I'm also in the first area of the city, and strangers coming off the street will go right to his work. It is. Uh, it's just amazing how people relate to that. Uh, it's almost photorealism. It's, uh, it could be nautical scenes, marsh scenes, all kinds of scenes. It's, it's just gorgeous. Then our second uh, biggest artist is a figurative artist. Uh, he started with us doing Tibetan paintings. He came from uh, China and he came with uh, hundreds of Tibetan scenes. Well, they just went off the wall, and uh, they're in several museums already. He's only been in this country 10 years, and he's already in museums, and uh, he does beautiful, uh, he does the Tibetan, now he's doing ballet, but the figurative work is out of this world. And then, just last year, we had this big trend of uh, still lives, and three still life painters are doing so terrifically and the arts they're they're just flying off the wall it's just amazing so those are those are principally who we're moving right now in the gallery we also represent uh, <clears throat> probably about uh, a, a dozen core artists and uh, probably close to 30 or 40 altogether but uh, beyond the flat art artists that we represent, Thomas Arvid, Michael Floor, these are artists.